fruitful boughs that do not receive nourishment and water. How many do you know of? This is a reference to the virgin birth right here. Do we as Israelites, as Nazarene Israelites, do we believe in the virgin birth? Absolutely. We don't believe in the Immaculate Conception. And if you ask the average Jewish person, they think it's the same thing. The Immaculate Conception means Mary was born perfect. Yo no creo en Immaculate Conception. But I believe in the virgin birth. So he was a tender plant, a root that was water, never watered, dry, popping out, out of unfertile, dry ground. There's a direct reference here to the virgin birth. This can't be Israel because Israel was not a dry, a dry root, in a, a root or a plant in dry ground. Yahweh said, I carried you on eagles' wings. I married you. I romanced you. Exodus Shemot 4, Israel is my son. Go tell Pharaoh, go tell Pharaoh that Israel is my son, my firstborn. And I carried you in the wilderness on eagles' wings as a father carries a child. I commanded all the children of Israel, by Yikra 23, to dwell in tabernacles, in booths, that they may remember that I was their shelter, that I was their cloud by day, that I was their pillar of fire by night. That was certainly a nation that was not a root in dry ground. They were watered and nurtured and cared for and given manna in, Sh in Shemot 16. Manna from heaven, for it is written, he gave our fathers manna to eat. Manna, manna, manna. Hallelujah. Notice it said our fathers. I didn't say the Jews. Just like Rav Shul told the Corinthian assembly. Our fathers passed through the sea. Our fathers were mikvah. Our fathers, our fathers. Because he knew in 1 Corinthians 5, 7, he goes, so let us keep the Pesach. Let us keep the feast. Not with the leaven of malice and unsincerity, but with, as a new lump. He said, our fathers went through the sea. Our fathers drank from the rock. Our fathers. So that's why I was in... In most congregations, you'd hear, well, the Jewish people, the, the, no, no, these were our fathers. Because in this room, we have both Yehuda and Ephraim. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. We shall see him, look at verse 2. He has no form of beauty. When we see him, there is no tifer that we should desire him. In other words, he didn't come in king's apparel. What did Yeshua say? You want kings? Go to the wilderness. You'll see them traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho. You want kings? Turn on American Idol, you'll find some kings. She was not a king. He didn't dress like a king. Matter of fact, he didn't even dress like a carpenter. He couldn't afford any clothes, barely. When Yahshua said, he that wants your cloak, give him your tunic. You know what he was saying? You, no, you really don't know what he was saying. You know what he was saying? He said, go around naked. Because they only had two coat, two, one cloak and one coat. And one tunic, and they wore both of them. One was an overgarment, one was an undergarment. How many know Yeshua existed before there were hands? <laughs> you want to pray about that one? <laughs> so he had an undergarment, and he had an overgarment. And he said, if someone wants your outer garment, give me your undergarment. It's better to go naked in Yahweh than be clothed with palatial glory. Come on. And be a lost sinner. And boy, did Yochanan Marcus find, Moshe find that out in the garden. Following Yeshua, he flew, he fleed the garden naked. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Okay. We, when we see him, he has no tifera that we should desire him. Verse 3. He is despised and rejected by men. Moshiach um, was not dressed in clean clothing. Men in scripture is always symbolic of Yisrael. Read Ezekiel 35, read Ezekiel 36. It says, Yisrael, the sheep of Israel, the, my, the man of my pasture, the man of my flock. The man is a Hebraic, listen, the word men. I will make you fishers of men. Go look it up. We, you gotta compare scripture with scripture. The word men is a Hebraic metaphor for Yisraelites. Israelites. Okay? Look it up. You'll see it in Ezekiel 35, Ezekiel 36. He's despised and rejected by men. What men? The men of both houses. When the real Mashiach comes, how many houses are going to stumble at the coming of the Mashiach? Both houses.
Moses. Well, Rabbi, I don't believe that. I believe the Jews today are all 12 tribes. Really? Really? Guess what you believe? That all 12 tribes have been reunited in what today is commonly called the Jewish people? Well, then Messiah hasn't come. Because it says when Messiah comes, not one house of Israel will fall over his message, but two. And just because you and I don't see the other one, Yeshua saw them, and to this day, they stumble over the stumbling stone. Stumble over the stumbling stone. Stone stumble. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. He's despised and rejected by men, the men of Israel, in, in context. A man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. We hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised. We esteemed him not. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Both houses still run from the true message. Listen. Either rejecting it outright or changing it into a Gentile, Western, antinomian perversion. I'll say that again in case you had trouble understanding my words. Both houses run from the true message. Most preachers do not preach the true gospel because they don't know what the gospel is. It's the restoration of the kingdom. It's not the building of a Gentile church separate from the historic people of Israel. It is the regathering of the nations into Israel and the kingdom restored. Because in Acts chapter 1 verse 6, the Talmudim turned to Yeshua and said, Yeshua, I mean it's really nice that you're the Messiah, but there's one piece of unfinished business. Will you at this time restore the kingdom? So the kingdom wasn't restored in Yeshua's lifetime. Will you restore the kingdom to the Baptists? No. Will you restore the kingdom to the Presbyterians? No. Will you restore the, 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 Christian, the, the Christians to the, to the kingdom? No. Will you restore the what? Kingdom to Israel. Israel. So what is the message of the kingdom? The restoration of the kingdom to Israel. The throne of David being established, the 12 tribes being gathered, and whoever else wants to join the 12 tribes, come in, the blood is hot. <laughs> come in, come in, come in, come in. But don't expect me to trade in Pesach for bunnies. Don't expect me to trade in matzo ball soup for paint to paint the eggs red. Don't expect me to trade in tzitzit for a pair of beads that rose and rosary beads. I'm not joining your church, honey. Bank on it. Count on it. Amen. Pastor, in all due respect, it's up to you to join us. Because in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I have gone to prepare a place so that where I am, you may be also. Now he's in heaven. When we die, we go to be with heaven. Where he is, we may be also. But when he returns to earth and sets up the throne of David in Jerusalem, there, because where I am, there you will be also. We follow the leader. Amen. People always like to argue. Do we go to heaven or does heaven come here? Oh, what do I care? If I follow the leader, I'm in. <laughs> Wherever he goes, I'll go. Where I am, you shall be also. Amen. So if he's in heaven and, and the kingdom is postponed because he's waiting for the nations to return, I go to heaven. When the king comes, I come with him. Just keep your eyes on the leader. Amen. Ask any pool player. You got to follow that eight ball. There you go. There you go. Yahweh. So you all can argue where we go when we die. Do we go to heaven? Does heaven come to us? Thank you. I agree. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Read Revelation 21, the new Yerushalayim comes down to the earthly Yerushalayim, and the two Yerushalayims become one. So I, so I don't care if he brings the, this, I got to go there to get there to get there to get, eventually, all things are gathered in Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He's despised and rejected by Israel. Man, our report, it's an Israeli report, a man of sorrow acquainted with grief. As we were, as we hid our faces from him. What does it mean to hide the face, to run from truth? My Baptist brother, welcome to Israel. Here's a pair of tzitzit. Here's how you keep Shabbat. Here's how you keep a kosher home. Here's how you get all the unhealthy and all the unclean foods out of your life. Oh. So if I am... So you're telling, me G you're telling me Jesus came to make me Jewish? No, not at all. He came to make Jews Israel, and he came to make non-Jews Israel. 